with blackouts at an all-time high in the country. Energy experts gathered in Cape Town today in an effort to shed light on possible solutions. Elite Africa is a platform for players to network and exchange new ideas. In fact, Energy Minister Gweta Mantashe was in attendance and addressed delegates. Uh, he has told investors to have patience as new opportunities begin to come online. He says Aisha Ismail was also there and she'll join us now. I mean, Aisha, what does Mantashe say are the biggest challenges? Well, the minister touched on a variety of issues, but he believes that South Africa is on its way to becoming um, energy secure again. He says that he, as well as all the um, stakeholders, are doing everything within their power to solve the energy crisis. He also says that um, all the measures that they have put in place are going to yield results and of course the minister did sound very upbeat and positive although he did talk about the fact that he's very concerned about the power grid he's, he's concerned about the capacity of the grid and to explain this he says it doesn't matter how much um, power you generate from renewable energy if, for example from solar energy or wind energy if you are not able to put this onto the grid it then renders that power useless. He also did have a go at environmentalists saying that they certainly do have too much power when it comes to energy generation and he also says that he believes that they are the ones holding us back when it comes to new power generation. This is what the minister had to say. Environmentalists veto every development if they don't like and therefore Gas to power is taken to court all the time. There's a 3,000 megawatt storage in, in Richards Bay by ESCOM. It was taken to court. ESCOM won the case. They have appealed that case. We're going to issue another 3,000 gas to power in, in Nguha, and we're hoping that we'll be able to, to, to go with it. Uh, we're also going to issue a request for proposal for procurement of 2,500 megawatts for nuclear energy. Uh, nuclear energy. We need nuclear. We have Quebec. We must increase that capacity. It's reliable. Uh, petroleum. We're battling with exploration of gas and oil. Uh, we stay in court. It's one process that we're prepared to engage. We're going to endure. People can take us to court as many times as they can. We will continue with gas and petroleum exploration because we have a lot of potential. Our shale gas in the Karoo has been tested, experimented, and it has been proven to be economical. So we are going to remove the moratorium on shale gas. If you want to explore shale gas, come to the fore. Uh, go with us. Be prepared to have uh, the patience of enduring court challenges all over that, but we're going to open it. What solutions, um, Aisha, are government considering at the moment? Well, of course, Gwede Mantashi did talk about um, renewable energy. He did also talk about gas to power. And there was a question asked about South Africa's um, relationship with Russia when it comes to gas. And he says that while South Africa isn't necessarily targeting Russia, if they do have solutions to offer, South Africa will look into it. This is what he had to say. Russian gas in South Africa. We don't necessarily target Russian gas. We want capacity to develop gas. If Russians come and offer that capacity, we look into them. And in looking into them, we look into what company is it? Is it subject of sanctions or not? And all that exercise will be taken in selecting a company that we're going to use. So we're not focusing particularly on Russian capabilities on gas to power. We're looking into various options we had issued a tender for companies to partner with Petro SA to revive the refineries in Mosulbay. Uh, we are going to finalize that. 
we we'll look into everybody, whether it is Russian or somebody else, we we'll look into those, any capacity that can help us revive that refinery, we're going to look into. And Aisha, I mean, you were there. How was the minister received by industry leaders? Well, certainly um, people who attended his um, keynote address asked him a myriad of questions. And yes, on the one hand, he was talking about the grid capacity. But one of the issues that also came up was the transmission capacity. And now I'm also joined by my guest, Kashuk Wickham. You asked the minister about infrastructure and how we are going to transmit this energy. We specifically talked about the coastal energy areas, the Eastern Cape, the Western Cape, and the Northern Cape? Well, look, Aisha, it is said, good afternoon, that the transmission capacity is severely lacking in the Northern Cape, Western Cape, and Eastern Cape. And all three of those provinces are rich in sun and in wind generation. And so if one were to or wants to build all this generation capacity which the country needs, and we know that the country has a 6,000 megawatt shortfall, hence the load shedding, you're going to have to build it in those provinces. But in order to do that, you're going to have to increase the transmission capacity within those three provinces. So we believe, and I believe, that the next challenge which we're going to face, in fact, the current challenge which we're going to face, how do you transport the energy to be generated to the far-flung parts of the country? And how do we do that? Well, again, it is tried that es ESCOM lacks, lacks the transmission capacity. I also believe that it lacks the ability to build the transmission capacity required because it's such a big requirement. And then, of course, the financial capacity. So we'd like to believe or we believe and propose that public-private partnerships are the way to go, similar to toll roads, where the private sector builds a particular line and rents it back to ESCOM on a per-user basis um, and hands it back to ESCOM after 20, 25, 35 years. Thank you so much for your time. And that was Kashif Wickham talking about the transmission capacity. That is also a major challenge right now. But William, um, tomorrow we're expecting the Minister of Electricity to close this three-day session of this energy conference that was held here at the Cape Town International Convention Centre. Thank you so much. That's ENCA's Aisha Ismail live to us from Cape Town at the Enlit Africa event. Still 